Hello me and hello you. Hi guys, this is Erin, welcome back to another bullet journaling moment. Before you say anything, yes there are ants on my desk. This is a new desk that was a hand-me-down and apparently it's come with some surprises. Some months I go in with a spark of an idea that has come from somewhere, I don't know, something I've seen throughout the month. Sometimes I go in completely blind with no idea what I'm going to do. In this instance, all I knew was that I wanted some of this lovely soft mint green kind of color. So I went through my little booklets of paper. I have three little stashes of pretty paper that I bust out when I'm not too sure what I'm going to do in my bullet journal. And I knew I had a Tombow Jewel Tip brush pen to match. So I've pulled out these pages and they're going to be forming the basis of my setup for this month. I'm not going to go through and tell you what pens I'm using because I didn't end up using half the pens that I pulled out and introduced, so I'm just going to mention them as we go along. This first piece of paper is from a booklet that I got from Kmart, which if you live in Australia, you can also get this book of paper, which is great. I absolutely love this wreath and the first time I saw it in the booklet I knew that it was going to be perfect for a cover page and I was just waiting for the right moment and here it is, May is the moment. It's a little bit bigger than the Loish Term 1917 pages are, which is the notebook that I use, so I've trimmed down around the outside of the wreath to start with and promptly forgot which way was supposed to be up, so I just chose my favourite, but I also needed to trim off a little bit of the design on the side to make it fit the page. I know May is springtime for some of you in the world and it's actually autumn here in Australia which if you watched my April setup you'll know I was all about those autumnal colours. I'm going a bit more for you guys in spring weather at the moment with these flowers but that's just because honestly it's still really hot here in Australia. It's been like 28, 29 degrees in Brisbane pretty much every day the past week here at the end of April. Not so much in other parts of Australia but Brisbane's up quite far north. May doesn't give you a lot to work with as far as letters when it comes to hand lettering, so rather than just jumping in with what I usually do, I've pulled out my phone and I've searched for May hand lettering on Google image search and just scrolled until I found one that I liked the look of, and I'm appropriating that for my May cover page, which I'm actually writing onto the wreath paper directly before sticking it down. I was just about to go in with the Tombow Fudonosuke, and then I realized that my hand was a little bit shaky, and I still find this pen quite difficult to use. I haven't quite mastered the thin and thick up and down motion because the, the pen tip is so rigid, but it's something I'm determined to do. So I thought I'd have a couple of practice runs first. So again, if you watched my video from last month, I had these handy bits of white paper kicking around from a sample wedding album that I've kind of been using as scrap or filler or whatever. So I gave it a couple of practice tries there just to get warmed up before I committed this indelible ink onto my pretty wreath here. And I did also sketch it out in pencil first. So yay for making life easier for myself, I guess. Going in with the glue tape here, I can absolutely recommend glue tape over a glue stick for this kind of thing. This paper is actually kind of thick, it's almost a cardstock but not quite, so I do prefer a thinner paper to decorate my bullet journal with where possible, but you gotta work with what you got, right? Especially at the moment when we're avoiding going outside at all costs. And how easy is that for a May cover page? If you don't have access to this exact paper, you could absolutely find a floral wreath design somewhere online and print it out, or you could make your own from lots of little images or stamps, or you could draw something. I just really enjoyed how low effort this particular design was. I don't dislike putting effort into my journal, but when something can look so good so effortlessly, that's always nice. You guys know I love to rip up some paper if you've watched any of my other bullet journaling videos. So here I am, back at it with my paper ripping game. I wanted to get some of this green going on here. I've used a corner of this page, which is from a different collection of paper. This one is actually from Wish, I think, and it was quite inexpensive and shipped fairly quickly considering, although that was pre-COVID-19. That's just going to be a little bit of a top and bottom page lining situation here and I've got this sticky calendar 
for May. I have sticky calendars for every month actually. My lovely friend John gave them to me when we both first got into bullet journaling back in 2017. And I've used them in a couple of setups and the May color scheme just happened to tie in with what I was doing here. It's a little bit more of a blue pink than the pinks in the roses around, but I thought it worked really well. And I don't have many events in May that I need to make sure I write down. So uh, this is gonna do me just fine for my calendar page. There were also these little cutout bits that came with this booklet from Wish. And I've just stuck one of those up in the top to balance out the layout, make sure there's a little bit of something going on in that empty corner. And I'm gonna flick back to my test page here and try out these pens because I wasn't sure which of these colors were going to work with the colors in the papers. So I thought I'd just pop some down on some paper so I could compare. And really that green Tombow is the only one that made me wanna keep it around. So sorry, green Faber-Castell pen and blue Tombow, but you guys are cut from the team just for this month. This ballet pink washi tape, when I look at it on its own, I never really wanna use it, but it, it just comes in handy so often. I find I always am reaching for it and I've nearly run out and I bought it in Japan and I won't be able to go back there anytime soon. So I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do about that when I run out, but here we are. Just going to add a little bit of something to the top and bottom of each page with the washi tape. And I've had to pull up the paper in a couple of spots where I decided I wanted the washi tape to go down behind the paper, but I didn't decide that until after I'd already stuck the paper down. But lucky that glue tape is a little forgiving, not super forgiving, but enough that I could get away with it this time. Be careful when you're sticking things down in the middle binding side of the book, because things can get difficult as far as page turning and page curvature there, as you can see through the page. I'm gonna trim off the edges and just pop down the numbers of each day of May. What's really satisfying here is that May finishes on a Sunday and I like to start my weeks on Mondays, which means that June will start on a Monday and the week's just gonna be so nice and, and clean and even and that really makes me happy. I'm going in with almost my standard habit tracker layout here. I have mixed it up a little bit because I found it difficult lately to follow the numbers down to where I am because I haven't been filling out my habits as much as I would like to say that I have. So I've tried to make it a little bit easier for myself this time around by adding a really light gray vertical line down from each, well, I guess horizontal when you're holding the book up right, but <laughs> a very pale gray horizontal line defining every second day of the month so that I can easily follow it down to the correct habit that I need to be filling out, hopefully. I'll be on top of my habits a little bit more through May than I was in April. But at the same time, I'm trying not to put too much pressure on myself because it is such a weird time in the world and I don't have any work to do. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to still be productive. I was self-employed and worked from home to start with anyway, but you know, it's, it's a tricky time. I haven't used any of this green striped rose design yet, so I thought I'd get in there with my heading, pop that onto this paper. That's a lot going on, but I think with very little else happening on the page right now, and all that will be happening is just some lines in boxes, um, that I could get away with a little bit of a, a busy title up here. Um, so I'm just going in with the Tombow Fudonosuke here again. As I mentioned, I am determined to master this pen. I'm gonna keep working on it. stick that habit tracker title down at the top. I've got it a little bit off center just to fill in that space since the green's coming up all the way to the top of the page. And I'm gonna pop down my habits as well, just flicking back to April so I can see what I need to be copying over here. You guys don't usually see the list of habits. I usually add that in later because honestly, I usually forget, but I remembered this time, look at me go. I have it kind of divided into sections. So the top section is general life things. And lots of them are things that I don't do every day. Lots of them are just so I can look back and be like, oh, it's been a week since I washed my bed sheets. Better do that. And then I have a section for skincare because I like to use a lot of 
active ingredients in my skincare and my skin can get a little bit sensitive if I go too hard on it. So I like to track when did I last use retinol and when did I last use uh, glycolic acid and stuff like that. So I can make sure that I'm not overdoing it. And then I have a section at the bottom that I only added on to April, which is um, one of them is learn and the other one is make. So basically, you know, try and learn something in the day and try and make something in the day because those are good things for mental health and productivity without being too much a stickler for it, you know? Like it's, it's good to make something in your day, but you don't necessarily have to be making something to share with the world or, you know, to make your life better. Just making something for the sake of making something is nice too. I stuck this round bit down on the bottom here because I'm fairly certain I'm not going to add any more habits to that and that's just a bit of wasted space at the bottom so I thought let's fill it in with something cute so cut a line through the middle of this round design here and that's just so that it folds better into the page because if you don't cut it that's going to be quite a hindrance on your book it's going to always want to fall open to that page like it's a bookmark so I find just snipping it in half and sticking it down like that instead helps the book to operate better. This facing page to my habit tracker here is for gratitude and I have been filling it out through April and I found it's just nice to think of something positive every day. I've gone in straight onto the Loish term paper this time rather than putting down a backing for my heading and I'm using one of the pink, uh, what are these, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pens to pop down my gratitude heading. This is actually going to be a drop shadow because now I'm going back in with the Tombow Fudenosuke and just adding a little bit to the right of that pink, a nice bold black graphic line as well. Definitely feeling like I'm getting the hang of the up and down flow better than usual with this layout, but I don't know, I might have just gotten lucky. <laughs> Remains to be seen. You can see there's a lot of experimentation going on for this particular setup because I really didn't know what I wanted from it going in besides green, which is not a lot to go off, but I also really enjoyed just playing and placing things and seeing how I liked them and seeing what I could do with the space that I had. So I've used one of these lined floral bits just to cut out around some of the flowers and that's going right in the corner here. I like how that looks. I don't always need a whole line for a gratitude item, so I thought that having a little bit less space at the bottom and right up at the top there won't be too much of an issue. And we're going to carry on to the next spread, which is the spending tracker on the left side and social media planning on the right side. I am very proud to report that only having one page for my spending tracker for April has been very successful because your girl has not been spending money on anything but essential items. So I've gotten even more confident for May. Hopefully the world doesn't suddenly start operating again and I'm just hopelessly out of space because I've put a huge paper heading up here with spending tracker on and then I've only allowed myself probably two thirds of a page to actually list out all of my expenses. Challenge accepted, me. So far that would have been adequate for April, but we shall see how we go. <laughs> to anyone who started off this year on a low buy or no buy in any category, I know a lot of people were doing it for skincare and makeup. Please let me know how that's going for you. I am pretty good with buying stuff anyway. I'll only buy things to replace what I run out of or to fill a need really. I don't like to have too many backups of things, but this year has definitely been very easy to not be tempted to buy a whole bunch of stuff I don't need. Okay, advance apologies guys, my camera cut out while I was shooting the social media page and I didn't actually realize that it had run out of battery until I had already finished it. Um, sorry, but I will show you what it looks like because I got most of the way there. It was a really simple little addition that I did after the camera cut out that you don't see. I literally just drew some lines and wrote some dates which is bullet journaling in a nutshell, is it not? Drawing lines and writing dates. Basically, I put this big header in the middle with social media on from my handy dandy little pop out bits of card that came from my wish book of paper. Wow, that sounds like a mystical title, the wish book of paper. I counted the first couple of days of May in my April setup for my social media planning purposes. So I'm only going to need four weeks worth of May planning space. So I divided the page into four and I'm just going to be doing all of my social media planning within those boxes for each of the weeks of May. And now we're going on to the first week of May, actually the first two weeks of May for the weekly setups. And I'd never done this layout before. I kind of was just winging it and uh, it didn't go so well on the left side page. So I have just decided to speed that footage up to like 2000% because you don't really need to see me messing up 
quite that badly. You'll see there's a lot of correction tape going in here after. Basically, I'm putting seven boxes down on the page. I believe they are 12 and a half boxes wide by six boxes tall. I have two spaces in between each one, but I drew them out higher up the page. And then when I started going in with the pen, I decided that I wanted them two boxes lower than I'd started and issues ensued to say the least. But you know what? It's a bullet journal. Only I look at it besides you guys watching me set it up. In day-to-day -day life, only I look at it. So it's not a big deal. <laughs> and it wouldn't be one of Erin's bullet journal setups if I didn't mess something up. So you'll see the same layout in better practice on the opposite side. I paid a bit more attention setting this one up than I did the first lot. Still not leaving myself a great deal of space for tasks because I'm not doing much outside of household stuff and some social media scheduling and YouTube planning the occasional album design for a client and that sort of thing. So I don't need a huge amount of space for a super long to-do list day to day. The space that I left to myself in my April setup, which was actually less than this, was totally adequate. So definitely gonna do me just fine for the month of May, even if things do get a little bit busier than I'm anticipating. I've added a green line at the top of each box to be the heading so I know which box corresponds to which day. Adding some more paper. This was another one of the pre-cut shapes from the Wish packet, which is very nice because, again, minimum effort, maximum artistic payoff. Always an excellent deal if you ask me. I knew I wanted something down in this bottom space. I wasn't too sure what, so I ended up just cutting out some more flowers from this stripy paper laying them down so they overlapped a little bit, which honestly does make the book quite thick on this page and could be a little bit tricky to write over on the other pages, but we'll get through. It's only for a month, so not a big deal. I put down a bit more of that ballet pink washi tape just before I stuck these down this time. Haha, <laughs> I have learned from past spreads. Hindsight is 2020, as they say, although 2020 is... <laughs> oh. Let's not go there. I ended up pinching a flower off this other page as well, which had some of the lovely green. I wanted to just bring that green back in here. And then there's not much left to do besides adding in the date to each of the boxes. So I know which box corresponds to which day of the week or fortnight as it were, since uh, this covers two pages. I added May to each of these as well, just because I thought it looked nice with a little bit more text. You don't have to write Monday, May 4, Tuesday, May 5 onto every single box like I did. I just thought it looked nice. And I like writing things down by hand, which is a bit strange. I don't think everyone in the world shares that with me, but there's a little error in factoid. I like to write things out by hand. As you'll see, I'm gonna mess up the Sunday on the second page because that's just how I roll. Sunday, May 17, I went to write Saturday again. And you know what? Tombow Jewel Tip Brush Pen does not write so well over the top of correction tape. In fact, nothing really writes that well over the top of correction tape, if we're being totally honest. But you know what? It's fine. There's enough correction tape on the facing page anyway. I guess it's balanced in its own sort of strange way. I wasn't done yet. Apparently, I decided a border would be a fun idea, so I've just added that in so that it kind of sneaks behind the boxes with a pink Faber-Castell Pit Artist brush pen, the same one that I used for the drop shadow on the gratitude page. And from there, all that's left is to add my little tab at the beginning of the book. You can see here that me writing April the wrong way didn't annoy me enough that I wanted to fix it yet, but maybe that day just hasn't arrived yet, we'll see. I made sure I wrote it the right way for May though. I'm just gonna stick that in here so I can quickly jump to the month without having to check an index. And that's it, that's the May setup guys, we did it. Here's the final flip through. Collaged bullet journal layouts are definitely my go-to fallback when I don't know what to do for a setup. And I'd love to know what your fallback is. If you're not sure how you're going to set up a month in your bullet journal, do you recreate something from YouTube? Do you start totally from scratch? What inspires you when you're not feeling particularly inspired? Thank you so much for being here with me for another bullet journaling video. I hope you're doing well through this fairly traumatic time. And I can't wait to see you again in another video very soon. I have a few lined up for you guys, so make sure you stick around, hit the subscribe button, button if you haven't already and you like bullet journaling videos because I do make one of these setups every month. If you're new to bullet journaling, I also have a video about getting started in bullet journaling and what I wish I knew when I first started out. So make sure you check that out too if you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all of these crazy setups that you see on YouTube. I promise you this one looks way fancier than the actual amount of effort required to make it happen. Once again, my name is Erin and you can find all my social media links down in the description if you'd like to see me on other parts of the internet. 
Stay safe, keep washing your hands, and I will catch you again very soon. Happy May!